This is how I would learn React if I. Okay, let's cut the preamble. I only have twenty minutes, so let's get to the point. The stopwatch. Everyone seems to do a countdown timer, but I always thought the stopwatch was more practical. So here it is, a super simple React app with the tiniest bit of Tailwind CSS. Start, stop, reset. Step one: set up your React project. npx create React app and add the name of your project. I want to call this a one stopwatch. Wait for React to work its magic, and then see that it works. Remove the stuff you don't need, and let's go. Step two: the first thing we need is use state. Use state is a React hook. Now there is a lot of React-specific lingo, which I like to dumb down for myself. I think of React hooks as little React tricks. Use state is a little React trick that helps us to track data or properties in between function calls. When initializing use state, we are destructuring the return value from use state, as shown in the square brackets. The first value, time, is our current state. The second value, set time, is the function that is used to update our state. The zero in brackets is us setting the initial state as the numeric value of zero. The more projects you do, the more variations of use state you see. So I won't go into it in detail here. I like to visually see the numbers on the page, so let's do the calculations now. Because this is one big JavaScript file, we can just add in the method here. I don't and will never remember the calculation by heart, but the logic is like this: the time is calculated by dividing the time by the number of milliseconds for each unit of time. We need the remainder operator, the percentage sign, because without it, if we do ninety thousand milliseconds divided by a thousand, we get ninety seconds. That's not much use to us for a stopwatch like this, because we need it to show one minute thirty seconds. So we need to add the remainder operator to flesh out the seconds. It's sixty for seconds, sixty for minutes, and one hundred for milliseconds. Step three: Let's add the buttons. Start, stop, reset. To add functionality, we can just add it down here. When it starts, we set running as true using the use state hook. This state will be remembered and used for our function later on until the stop button is clicked and running is set as false again. On reset, we want the time to be zero. Simple. Step four. Now this is the real clever bit of the stopwatch. To get it working, we need the use effect hook. Use effect is used to perform side effects. What does this mean? In React components, if the functional component makes calculations that don't target the output value, then these calculations are named side effects. For example, data fetching, manually changing the DOM, timers, etc. It accepts two arguments: callback and dependencies. Callback is the function containing the side effect logic. Dependencies is an optional array of dependencies. The use effect executes callback only if dependencies have changed between renderings. If you add in the dependencies, so what's the callback for our stopwatch? If the state is running, which means when the start button is clicked, we start counting the milliseconds using the pure JavaScript set interval method. If you want to understand more about set interval, check out the W3 School's free resource page. Link below. If the state is not running, which is our default position, and whenever the stop button is clicked, we want to clear the interval, and that stops the timer.
Finally, we want to put running as our dependency. And to resolve this issue of the timer keeps counting, like this, we just add dot slice minus two. Step five, conditional rendering. Now the icing on the cake would be if the stop button only shows when the start button is clicked. After all, what is the point of the stop button sitting there at the beginning when the stopwatch is not running? We can do this easily by using conditional rendering. I like a ternary operator, so let's use that. We set the condition first. So if the timer is running, we want to see the stop button. We just copy and paste it after the question mark. If the timer is not running, we want to see the start button. And we copy and paste that button after the colon. There we go. That's the functionality done. Step six, styling. If you're interested in the basics of Tailwind CSS, this is a super basic intro to adding the most basic styling. We can build it up as we go along with the other projects. So we follow the Tailwind CSS instructions to install it. You may have to stop running the application and restart again in order to see the effects of the Tailwind CSS. And then we go straight inside these tags to start styling. I'll put the Tailwind CSS documentation link below if you want to go through it to add your own colors and things. And that's it, a functioning stopwatch in six easy steps and under 20 minutes. See you next time.